you know i listen to the chinese president speaking in eloquent mandarin <laughs> saying how the relationship between africa and china is a mutually beneficial relationship he spoke about africa as if it was one country he did not remind himself in my mind that there are 55 countries in Africa or 54 if you ask Morocco. <laughs> and I, I listen to the Chinese president specifically mentioning the Gambia and a few other than Sao Tome and Principe that they were welcomed back to the world because they had renounced their relationship with Taiwan and they had now recognized the one China policy. Do I say this because there is anything wrong with China? No, I'm saying this because the Chinese are providing leadership for their people. They know exactly what they want for their people and they are doing exactly what they want for their people for the benefit of their people. The question that I'm posing to us, do we know what we want for our people? Are we doing what we need for our people? And the answer is, I doubt. Why do I doubt? I doubt because at the end of the entire enterprise, the Chinese president said that he had given or his government had given 60 billion United States dollars to 54 African countries. Notionally, therefore, each country would be entitled to no more than 1.5 billion. Half of the presidents who are present in China, each one of them, half of them, can produce 1.5 billion. Sportsmen in Europe and America, including boxers, can one, earn one billion dollars in a single bout. And we are here celebrating and singing the praises of China because they gave us 60 billion. Once again, it is a statement of the ability to recognize what leadership is all about. I'm submitting to us that when we interact with people like the Chinese, there is something to learn from them. We may condemn them at fora such as this, but there is wisdom in asking ourselves, how is it that this country, which about 30 years ago could not feed half our population, has in 30 years during our lifetime succeeded in pulling up nearly 800 million people out of poverty? How is it? That every road that is now be being built in Africa, whether the road is in Benin or in Nairobi, Kenya or in Johannesburg, South Africa or in Kigali, in Rwanda or the Democratic Republic of Congo, there is a Chinese farm whose name I cannot pronounce as the contractor for that farm. How is it? How is it? that China, which about 30 years ago did not produce a mobile phone, today out of every 10 mobile phones, we are using six which are from China. If it is not techno, it is some other phone. If we are in not inviting Jack Ma, we are inviting another Chinese because we have seen that they have the ability to organize the affairs. Some of us, particularly those of us who are in the middle class, our pride is that our child is learning Mandarin as a second language, not Isizulu, Mandarin. I fear, Bishop, that in the next few years, when they bring their children for baptism, and you ask them, how do you name this child? They were saying Deng Xiaoping Simfiu. I'm still talking about leadership. 
We have seen what leadership can do. Leadership has catapulted China to another completely different orbit. We have seen that leadership has catapulted South Korea to a different orbit. We have seen that leadership has catapulted Vietnam, which was bombed to the ground in 1975. Vietnam now produces more coffee than all African countries combined. What have they done? The men and women who have been given the opportunity to serve those countries long recognize that leadership is about service. And I can't agree more with the Honorable Minister who spoke before me and the good Dr. Aaron who spoke before me that the true essence of leadership is self-discovery and self-esteem. You know where i come from in my tribe and i know in many african communities when you do something very well they say you have done it like a white man when you arrive on time they say he has arrived like a white man when you speak well they say you spoke like a white man when you dress well you dress like a white man when you go to a beautiful place in Africa, you say, it does not look like Africa, as if Africans are incapable of doing the right things. And I'm telling us that until the day that we exercise the ghost of low self-esteem, Africa is going nowhere. I'm submitting to us that history has demonstrated times without number that personal conquest is the beginning of true leadership. If you don't conquer yourself, you are going nowhere. And I'm submitting to us that Africa must now recognize that whatever institutions you have, until and unless it is populated by men and women who have ideals, those institutions will collapse, never to be put together again. So going forward, ladies and gentlemen, I hold the view that a conference such as this that brings together men and women who recognize that Africa should occupy her pride of place amongst the Committee of Nations must be a conference at which we speak to each other honestly. I think we Africans have been too kind to each other for too long. The time has come that we must annoy each other. It is only when we have annoyed you sufficiently that we can canalize that anger and that anger can then be used to move mountains. And my joy is that Africa is not sleeping. My joy is that Africans are now beginning to wake up to the reality that we have not only the intellectual wherewithal, but that we have the resources to make our countries grow and grow in the proper direction. You know, not so long ago, and not so long ago in this case means about 50 years ago i read and listened to the leaders of the early days if you listen to any one of those leaders the clarity with which they were able to identify the problems of africa and the clarity with which they were able to prescribe the medicine that could solve the problems of africa was as titillating as it was as astounding you know i listen to the more casual works and i read the casual works of a young leader in the 1980s such as thomas sankara you know thomas sankara is a young individual whose claim to formal education was not very much. He did not hold any PhD. He was an army officer. He overthrows the government of Upper Volta and he goes into government and poses the question, why are we called Upper Volta? And he says the first thing that we must do is to change the name of this country so that it becomes Burkina Faso, the land of the upright man, and that the people of this country must be called the Burkina, the upright people. And he says we have been suffering with hunger and food shortages for too long we have depended on France for too long we can no longer be 
children and toddlers in our adulthood. We cannot be in economic and political diapers for too long. And he begins to release the country. And no sooner has he succeeded in doing this than the erstwhile colonial power says that this is a bad example. And they eliminate him. And not only Thomas Sankara. I remember the man for whom I am named in 1961, Patrice Emery Lumumba, only age 36, and he recognizes, and on that day of independence, not being scheduled to speak, he speaks nevertheless, and he says how happy he is that the history of the Congolese will be written by the Congolese, and they take him away. I listened to Ghana's Kwame Nukuruma saying that Africa cannot be free unless the whole of it is free. I look at the casual works of Bantu Stephen Biko. I listen to the casual works of Samora Moises Marshall. I read the casual works of Modibo Keita in Mali. I look at the works of Agostino Nato, the works of Africans who are clear. And those of you who are alive, then you could see that the indices of development in Africa were moving up north. If it was not infant mortality that was beginning to be lowered, it was maternal mortality and crude death rates. Africa was moving. But remember that Charles Darwin is still right. In this jungle that we call the world is survival of the fittest and the dying of the least suitable. When we begin to rise as a people, there are those whose only claim to success is to put us down, to tell us, not in so many words, that we are children of a lesser God. It is our duty to tell them that we are not. And that is why we have forums such as this. You know, there are those who may say, and I'm one of them, that perhaps in Africa we hold too many seminars that we hold too many conferences, that we hold too many colloquia, but I hold the view that these things must be repeated time and time again, so that if they are clear, they become even clearer. Is it not true that gold must be in the fire and the furnace before it is refined? Is it not true that Africa has men and women, the 1.2 billion of us, that we have the ability to catapult this continent to a higher level? You know, there was a time that Africa deluded herself, that a leader was one in the nature of Moses, communing directly with God, and that this leader had a rod and staff, and that he would part the Red Sea of disease, and disease would disappear by pronouncement of abracadabra. That this leader would call and summon manna from heaven 